and welcome to lesson 18.1 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking on the topic of mouse tracking in Alice and kind of doing the basics of mouse tracking. Now at first glance mouse tracking doesn't even seem like it would be that important in Alice, but I've seen it used to pretty good effect and I've made some games that I'm rather proud of uh, using these mouse tracking techniques. And the reason they're often overlooked is Alice uh, by default in the events have really useful mouse events like when the mouse is clicked on something. So more often than not when you want to check if the mouse is clicking on something you're using that particular event and pairing it with Alice objects. But where this becomes really useful is if you're importing highly detailed billboards and you want the user to be click able to click on different regions of a single billboard. Well when you import a billboard into Alice it's a single object, which means Alice can report if the billboard's being clicked on or if it's not, but the individual parts of the billboard aren't really accessible. When you're making, say, like a point-and-click adventure game, it's important to be able to know what region of a particular billboard your user is clicking on. So we'll go ahead and take a look at basic mouse tracking and some of the applications for this in Lesson 18.1. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are looking at a new Alice world. And we'll definitely be coming back to Alice, but I think we're going to start in Paint, or any graphic editing program will work, but uh, Paint is what I'm going to use just because it's the simplest and it's probably what most users will have. And I just want to create a graphic that has four regions in it. So the way I'm going to do that is just get the black ink color out, select the line tool, and I'm going to draw a straight line up the top, and a straight line kind of bisecting this image into four different regions. Um, then I want to label each region. So using the text tool, we're going to label this uh, region 1, region 2, region 3, and region 4. Essentially what this uh, image is going to represent is a single billboard that has four clickable areas or four usable areas. Now when we import this into Alice, Alice is going to see this as just one image and won't necessarily care that there's four regions, but uh, we'll be able to use the mouse tracking that we do in this lesson to allow Alice to discern where all of these different regions are. So make yourself a graphic similar to this and let's go ahead and save it. Uh, so I'm going to name mine four region graphic. You can see I've got it in my Alice 2.4 directory, so let's go ahead and save this. And once we're done with that, head back into Alice, because we'll be importing this as a billboard. Now for this program right here, I'm not going to be using the ground, so I'm going to delete the ground and just give myself a uh, blank background here. Go up to File, make a billboard, and then find that image you just made that had the four regions, similar to the way we've done other billboards. And I'm going to have this turn to face the camera, and I'm going to position this so that it takes a majority of the screen. So that looks probably about right there, and that'll work. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit of a border. Uh, to make it look just a little bit better, I am going to take the world properties and set the atmosphere color to black. And so now I have this uh, graphic on the screen that has four regions. And that's all I'm going to need for this tutorial right here. So we've got our uh, ground deleted and a single billboard here that has four regions in it. Now what we're going to do in Alice is create a method that tracks the mouse and its position on the screen. In order to understand how this works, you have to understand kind of how graph paper works, maybe say like in a mathematics class. Your screen is set up with coordinates. Every single pixel has an X and a Y coordinate. We can head over to uh, Paint again where I have some graph paper set up. Uh, this is going to be a concept that transcends Alice and when you get into other programming languages like Java or Python or C, this is going to remain true for every programming language but there's a big nuance or a big difference between the way uh, your screen works and the way that a traditional graph paper works in math. So let's take a quick look at that. If you think of a graph in math, normally when you draw that, uh, let's use uh, maybe this blue color here, you normally have a sheet of paper that looks similar to this right here. And the center point right here is point zero zero. And so along this x-axis right here, as we go up, this would be 
point one on the x-axis, two, three, four, and so on. And then this goes negative to negative one, negative two, negative three. And the y-axis works really similar. As you go up, this is y value of one, two, three, four, and so on, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So that's pretty standard issue math. When you're thinking of your computer screen, you gotta change the way you're thinking about these coordinates just a little bit. Let's go ahead and take these lines off and redraw our center point kind of up here. Whoops, let's uh, try that again. So this is kind of going to be your baseline. When you're working with the computer screen, your point zero zero is always going to be the top left of the screen. Then X's work the exact same way. As you work yourself to the right on the screen, the X value will increase. So this would be point one, two, three, four, and so on. But the Y value is going to work the opposite as it does in math. That is, Y is going to increase as we move down the screen. So this is a y value of 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So what this essentially means is on a computer screen, if I wanted to draw a pixel right there, this would be point 1, 2, 1, 2. This would be point 2, 2, not 2, negative 2. Our mouse tracker is going to work on this principle. We are going to assign an X and a Y value in Alice in, as variables, and those values will always be equal to the X and Y coordinate of our mouse on the screen. It's something that you'll get better at as you practice, and we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this particular concept, but and when we go back into Alice and start setting the X and Y value, I want to make sure that everybody watching this knows why the X and Y values are what they are. So let's head back over to Alice and let's build a mouse tracking method. So a couple of things that we'll need before we can write our mouse tracking method, we're in our world, we're going to create two new variables. And I'm going to create an X variable, which will be a numeric variable, starting with a value of one, and a Y variable, also a numeric variable with a value of one. Now these will change almost immediately, but we need a place for our program to store the X and Y values. Next, let's go ahead and create a new method, and we're gonna call this mouse tracker. This will be the method that constantly updates the X and Y variable and reports their position in this coordinate plane back to Alice. Now this method is going to be pretty simple. It's only going to be a couple lines of code. We're going to start by adding a do together block. What I'm looking for is in the world functions, but before we do that, we're going to add lines of code to have x set value to, and we'll use one as a placeholder. We'll be changing this in a momentarily. And we're going to take the y value and set the value to one, and we'll change that momentarily as well. Also make sure you check the duration. I always get in the habit of changing these to a zero second duration, though I believe Alice defaults to that for variable changes. But um, I would definitely make sure that you have a duration of zero seconds here because we want this to happen instantaneously. We want the mouse tracker to run as fast as it possibly can on your computer. And if I right click on X and right click on Y and select watch this variable and hit play, I can see now that X and Y are both equal to one, but nothing's really happening. We haven't done anything to call this method yet. And even if we did, the values are being set to one at anyway. But this X and Y are going to represent eventually our mouse position on the screen. The functions that we're going to use are located in the world function list. Scroll down until you find the mouse subcategory, and we've got mouse distance from left edge and mouse distance from top edge. This first one, mouse distance from left edge, will represent the X value. If you think of the left edge of your screen as being the point zero, or the, uh, on the horizontal line, that would be an X value of zero, as your mouse moves further along the right, the X value will increase. So if you're seeing my mouse on the screen right here, 
this over here would be 0, 0.0, and the further I get away from the left edge of the screen, the more my x value will increase. So I'm going to set, instead of the value to 1, I'm going to set the mouse distance from the left edge. And I'm going to do the same thing, mouse distance from top edge, to represent my y value. And if you think about this, where my mouse is right now is a y value of 0, and as it moves down towards the center of the screen, the y value increases because it's getting further and further away from the top edge. All I need to do to get my mouse tracker working now is create a new event, and we're going to start with when the world starts, right click and change this to while the world is running. While the world is running, I want to run mouse tracker. And let's hit play. You can see now that X and Y are tracking my mouse on the screen. If I move to the upper left of my Alice window, and it's pretty hard to do because these are pixels, but I can get to the point zero, zero. The top left of my screen is zero, zero. As I move my mouse to the right, we can watch the X value increase almost instantaneously as the mouse moves. Similarly, as my mouse moves down through the screen, you can see the Y value is increasing. If I move it all the way to the bottom right of the screen, I can see that this particular window that I have open, or where my mouse is right now, is 1047 pixels from the right edge of the Alice window, and 771 pixels from the top edge of the Alice window. Now Alice does track your mouse even off of the Alice window, so if I move my mouse off screen to the top left of my monitor, which you can't see, my X and Y values can go negative, and Alice will still report an X and Y value even if I'm off the screen. So it's tracking my mouse on the entire monitor, even though Alice can only sense mouse clicks inside the Alice window itself. But if you've done this correctly, you should be able to watch your X and Y values and kind of see Alice track your mouse as you move it around the screen. And that's where we're going to take a break in lesson 18.1. Now we still need to uh, generate an event that can handle mouse clicks and do some things with the billboard that we put on the screen, but this is a good setup right here. And at the very least at this point, you should have an Alice program that's capable of tracking the mouse, even though it's really irrelevant to the program. The program doesn't do anything with the information, even though it's generating an X and Y coordinate, we're not doing anything with that. But what we are going to do in the next video is uh, create ourselves a mouse click handler that will allow us to do something with these regions and provide an example of how mouse tracking can work with uh, mouse clicks in Alice. But we'll do that in lesson 18.2. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the Atlas tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I can certainly uh, help you out as best I can to make sure that your individual program is working. But thank you so much for your support, and have a great day.